Yo, I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame. So it might be nice to own a jet plane. Hey guys, it's Matt coming back at you from All Sports Galaxy. Um, I haven't posted in a while, I know, but I'm back with a new type of video today. It's going to be doing um the top 10 catchers in Major League Baseball right now. I'm going to be doing this for all the Major League Baseball positions. I'm starting with the catching position. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed the new channel intro. If you did, drop a like and smash that like button. So um, before we get into the list um, of the top 10 catchers, um, we're going to see the um, players who just missed the list. Um, obviously, um, my just missed list um, included Francisco Cervelli of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, the reason he did not make the list is because... Well, the reason all these guys didn't make the list is because the guys in the top 10 list are obviously better, in my opinion. If you guys felt another way, you can leave your argument down in the comments below. But on my just missed list, I had Matt Wieters of the Washington Nationals. Uh, if he rebounds, he might be able to make my list next year. Same as Cervelli. Uh, he just had a down year to me. Uh, Steven Vogt. I don't think he's as good as everyone thinks. He's not a great defensive catcher either. And Brian McCann and Russell Martin, uh, they're just going up there in age, and they're not getting any younger. I don't think playing in Houston is going to help Brian McCann. I really don't. I think he would have been a better hitter in New York, but we'll see. Uh, and plus, with Evan Gaddis there in Houston as the primary starting catcher, I don't see McCann getting as much playing time. All right, into the list. Coming in at number 10. Uh, new signing for the Baltimore Orioles this offseason, Wellington Castillo. If you look at Wellington Castillo's numbers here, uh, he had pretty good numbers um, last year. Uh, let's see, he uh, <coughs> posted a 264 average with 14 home runs, and he drove in 66 art, or 68 runners. Uh, bad name, my bad. Um, and as you can see, the trend, I think the trend for this guy, he's still young, his defense is great, I think he's just going upwards, I think the new deal at Baltimore, hitting at Camden Yards, I think it's just going to be great, his career stats include 255, 60 home runs, 230 RBIs, he's a very young guy, I think he'll fit in great to that Orioles lineup, trying to come back after that wild card loss last year against the Blue Jays, I think uh, the Orioles, they'll be a pretty good team, and I think he's a very nice addition. Coming to the list next at number nine of the Los Angeles Dodgers power hitter Yasmani Grandal. Grandal obviously does not hit for the average, he hits for the power. He only had a two twenty eight batting average in um twenty sixteen, but he posted twenty seven home runs and seventy two runs batted in. Uh and if he could stay healthy this year, I think the power numbers could even go up, you know, to somewhere maybe in the mid thirties. Uh I think that'll be cool to watch cool to look out for and you know, I think he'll drive in more runs in that Dodgers lineup obviously you got Logan Forsythe added in more more guys more more production you're gonna do more guys on base uh who's definitely an on-base guy in Forsythe so I think uh Grandal will get more chances to drive in runs and I think it's gonna be fun to watch so we'll have to see about that um coming at number eight we talked about McCann being on the just miss list Brian McCann of the Houston Astros well, that's cause, and we said Evan Gaddis, his teammate, would probably be the primary starting catcher, and coming in at number eight is Evan Gaddis of the Houston Astros. Gaddis really surprised me last season. His batting average wasn't too bad for a guy like him. 251 is not the best batting average, but it's pretty good if you're going to drive in 32, or, or if you're going to hit 32 home runs and drive in 72 runs. That's a very solid production stat, a 251, 32, 72 mark. Obviously, his career stats include 102 home runs. He's driven in almost 300 RBIs throughout his career. I remember when he came up with the Braves, he was the janitor, and he tried out, and he was just such a stud. He hits for power, and he's really fun to watch. you got to love that beard he has. That beard is just something about it. Evan Gaddis, I'm telling you, I think... I think he's a great pitcher. I don't think it's a fluke. Maybe the average might go down a little, but I think the power numbers are going to stay for Evan Gaddis. All right, coming at number seven, uh, a lot of people might disagree on this one. Uh, I kind of had a hard time placing this guy, but at number seven, I have the New York Yankees young phenom, phenom Gary Sanchez. Obviously, a lot of people are like, uh, you should have had him at number one. You should have had him higher. Uh, you got to listen. This guy has only played in 53 games in the big leagues. He hasn't proven himself yet. He's proved he could be a great hitter one day, but you're going to have to see what he does over the course of a full season. I definitely think he can move up on this list if we do it again next year. 
But as for right now, I'm at number seven. There's a lot more veteran guys I have above him that I think are better. Sanchez obviously at 20 home runs in 53 games. Um, he hit 299. I don't expect him to hit that high. He's not. He was never really supposed to be a contact hitter. So we'll see what his stats include next year. All right. Moving up on the list, number five. Guys might disagree on this one too. I got Wilson Ramos, who just recently signed that deal with the Rays. Obviously, he won't be back in town till um, what's it called, um, July, I believe, because that knee injury, uh, and that's why I had a hard time placing him here because that injury, um, especially in the knee as a catcher, that's tough. I do think he'll be able to rebound. Obviously, the stats he put up last year were incredible. He was one of the best offensive hitting catchers of the year. When you hit three hundred seven and hit over twenty home runs, driving eighty RBIs, that's just really tough to do in this league, especially as a catcher. In a very um, the catcher position in MLB is lagging something. It's just doesn't have. It's lacking. My bad. It's lacking. Yeah, it's lacking a lot. Uh, there's not a lot of guys there. Hopefully that changes. But I think Ramos will rebound when he gets back. I think playing in St. Petersburg will really give him the advantage to work with some of those young guys and their young pitchers. It's gonna be fun to watch, and I think he'll have a great year. I always like Wilson Ramos, although I'm a Mets fan. He was with Washington. Number four, a fan favorite, the St. Louis Cardinals, Yadier Molina. A lot of these people are saying Yadi, Yadi, Yadi. Got it? So yeah, Yadi. Obviously, um, he's getting up there in age. He's in his mid thirties now. People are saying, uh, he's not as good anymore. Obviously, I still think he's great. You got to remember, I know he was injured a bit last year. But he went out there, he hit over 300. People are complaining that he only had eight home runs. Listen, this guy's never been a power hitting catcher. He's always been the offensive guy slash defensive guy. He'll get out there, he'll hit for contact, and he'll have great defense. That's the kind of guy he is, and he continues to put up those numbers, obviously. 285 career batting average, very good. Moving on to number three, you guys might be shocked by this one. This is kind of a surprise on the list for me. Number three, I have the Miami Marlins young athletic catcher, JT Realmuto. Obviously, JT, um, very young. I think he's only played in, like, two full seasons. But he I don't even think he came up as a catcher. And he was just so athletic, they just threw him out the catching position. And he's done great defensively, offensively. He's not the power type guy. Uh, I could see him, though, definitely hitting 15 home runs in a year, batting over 300 and throwing a lot of runners out, being productive. But we'll have to wait and see on that. I mean, I think this guy, he has a chance to help this Marlins team. Uh, he's one of the young guys coming up. I think him in the middle of that lineup with Stanton, Ozuna, and Yelich, it's going to be nasty. I think this Marlins team's getting there. They just need a little more on the pitching side. Obviously, the tough loss with Jose Fernandez, he'll never be forgotten. But I really do think that Marlins team's going to be good, and I think he's a big part of it. Why? The top two, you guys can probably guess. Number two, I have Texas Rangers catcher Jonathan Lucroy. He was a mediocre player with the Brewers. He went to Texas, and he was red hot. He finished the season uh, batting two ninety two with 24 home runs, 81 driven in. That's solid. You'll take it any day. He helped that team go on their um, postseason run. Well, not a postseason run. He helped that team go on the... Um, he helped the team go on that run to make the playoffs. Obviously, they got swept out by Toronto, which was tough. But I think the Rangers will be a great team with him there full year. I think he'll put up career numbers, Luke Roy. Obviously, he has 90 career home runs, over 400 career RBIs, which is good. And finally, moving on to the number one player on the list. No doubt about it for me. Very easy choice. Buster Posey of the San Francisco Giants. Congratulations to Buster for winning this. Obviously, his production was down a little in 2016, but he still had a solid offensive year with a 288 average, uh, 80 runs driven in, and um, 14 home runs isn't bad. He plays a hell of a defense. He can even play first base. Obviously, they're talking about him getting more time at first this year with Nick Hundley being signed. They want to give him more time behind the plate. I still think Posey definitely, actually definitely Posey is the starting catcher. When you have a career average over 300, his being 307, you have over 100 career RBIs and 100 career home runs, and you have over 500 career RBIs. That's very good. Buster Posey, he's the face of that franchise. I don't think he'll ever be playing anywhere else but in San Francisco. He is my favorite catcher in the big leagues, and that's my list, guys. So I don't know what you guys think. You guys can leave your thoughts and comments below. Leave a like and smash that like button. Subscribe. Tell me who you thought, what your list was, who you thought should be ranked where, how you guys liked my list, and next we're probably going to be doing the top 10 starting first baseman right now but 
as for all, um, please leave a like. I'll be more consistent. I'll be getting more videos for you guys. I'm so hyped. I mean, I just want to grow, be, be a YouTube star. This is what I like doing. Uh, so, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you. <laughs>